So the key element here with an MPT thread, guys, is we actually have to create a model of that taper and the specs of our thread in order to either use a single point on a lathe or maybe thread mill this inside the milling environment. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and start by sketching this all out. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna create my sketch. I'm gonna pick my plane here. And if you guys haven't caught my other videos, I'm a huge fan of rectangles day in and day out. So I am going to create a shoulder here, as well as this line for my taper. And then I'm actually going to add one more rectangle here. And this is going to be a construction rectangle. And a lot of you are going to see why here in a second. But this is going to help me actually determine where we can put a certain diameter or a certain actual length based on the specs. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch to D for diameter. Let's go ahead and add our taper angle of four degrees. Now, from the end of my actual piece of pipe here is I know at 0.32, we need to be at a specific diameter of 778. So again, based on what you guys have going on, you have the ability to set that up and adjust it. Pro tip here, because we are drawing a half profile and revolving this, if you go in and you actually select your outside edge to your inside edge, well, let me go ahead and do this again. So we're gonna go outside to inside, and then we're going to right click, you're gonna see diameter dimension. And this is a neat way to actually dimension something based on a diameter. So I actually did that backwards. So let's do that again one more time. D for dimension, inside to outside. And then we're gonna slide over and right click and go diameter dimension. And now you're gonna notice it actually gives me a true diameter. Again, we're gonna go with 778 here because we are doing a half MPT. And just like that, we have now set the exact point when we hand tighten what that needs to be based on our actual thread profile. Again, we're a little long here, guys. You can shorten this, you can lengthen this. I'm not gonna waste too much time on this because again, this is where our two parts are gonna mate together. And then we would want some additional thread here. I do have the spec, but you guys can fill that out as necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down a little bit and hit finish sketch. We're gonna go ahead and revolve this. So if you were gonna do an inside profile or an outside profile, you would of course do the mating part or the internal part. So there's my two boundaries. Here's my center line. Oop, we're gonna grab that third boundary as well because I do want that to create a nice little shoulder there. And just like that, we've created, in my case, a half MPT taper with our actual mating location. So we know our distance from the tip of our threads. And then we do have a very large amount of relief that you guys would adjust. So once you do this, the first thing I would always do is go ahead and save. And this is my one half MPT. So I could actually bring this in and place it on a model if I wanted in the future. However, we're just gonna do this as if this is an individual part. Maybe it's an adapter, who knows? So let's switch over to the manufacturer workspace. I am gonna do this on a lathe first. So if you're looking for a milling opportunity, you can go ahead and skip ahead into the video to the milling section on this. But let's go in and create our setup. Again, we're gonna just simply say this is turning. Here's my X, Y, Z. There's my outside profile. I'm not gonna adjust my stock for this, guys. We are gonna go in real quick. Let's just get my CNMT tool and create a very quick outside rough and finish. Again, we have our model front to model back. We have our passes tab. We're gonna turn on multiple passes just because our stock is a little funky. OD rough into a nice OD finish. I did do that a little quick. If you guys wanna see more about lathe turning, I do a Turning Tuesday video that dives deeper into those tool paths. But mainly what I did here is I roughed out our profile for threading. So now with that being said is if I go into a turning thread tool path, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is first off, grab my threading tool. Again, we're going with just the default tool here. You guys are gonna set up anything and everything based on your machine. So we're gonna go ahead and go to turning thread. I'm gonna go with that OD threading tool. And now this is where it's gonna be a little different. So we have to pick a face to thread. So that would be my taper. And as you guys can see automatically, because of the taper, we're coming in at that angle and we're following the angle of that surface. So we are starting where we need to start. We're following that all the way through. If I wanted to adjust the actual lengths that we're working with, for example, I wanna start at model front. Sorry, I apologize, we have gotta to go to geometry. So I would like to start maybe 100 thou off the front. And then I would actually like to stop a certain distance from the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, again, negative 0.5 to shorten that up. That's way too much. So let's just go 200 off the back. 
So as you can see, we're coming in and we're creating that threading cycle now based on the taper, allowing us to create anything and everything. A few things that I do need to do is I do need to set a thread depth. So in this case, my thread depth actually needs to be, so we have 057. So we're gonna go 0.057. And then I need my thread pitch. And in this case, we are doing a 14 thread. So if you didn't know, you could say one divided by 14, which will give us our actual thread pitch. We do have the ability to do multiple step downs as well, guys. You can increase or decrease as much as you need. And with that, as you're seeing, is we just created our MPT threading cycle based off that taper surface that we drawn. Now let's pivot over to the mill and see how we could do this on the mill. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new setup. Again, this is gonna be based on milling. We are going to do this vertical. So let's go ahead and pick my Z axis up. And again, we do have a nice piece of round stock here. So let's just go ahead and say fixed size cylinder with zero roundup. And now that we have that set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to 2D and we're gonna do a thread. Again, this is going to kind of work the exact same way. I'm going to go through, and again, you guys would have a single point tool already created. In my case, I don't think I'm going to have one, and I'm going to have to make one. So give me a moment here while I get this set up. So we need a thread mill. And in this case, we're actually not going to use a thread mill. We're just going to create a single point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new tool from scratch. And this is going to be our thread mill. And we're going to go through here and we have a number of flutes. We have our diameter. We also have our thread pitch. Again, our thread pitch hasn't changed since what we've known. So that's 0.057. Number of teeth is going to be one. So this is a very important step. Same thing is, is you do have your shaft diameter, which we can shrink down. Let's say it's 375. So as you're seeing is I'm adjusting this tool as needed. Again, this is going to come down to your preferences on your tool. The key element is, is once you have your actual thread mill set up, the same rules apply as it's looking for a circular face to thread mill. And just like that, as you're seeing, is we are now thread milling down that exact face. The same as what we were doing in the lathe. We're just doing this vertically. So again, as if I didn't want to go all the way down to whole bottom, I'm going to go ahead and plug in point 0.2. So we stop a little shy of what's going on. Moving over here a little further, this is where it tends to confuse a lot of people in the mill world. So what it's asking me for is a thread pitch, which it pulled from my thread tool. Now, the actual pitch diameter offset, this one tends to throw people off. So if we know our thread depth, we're actually going to use that number, but we're going to have to double it because this is determined by a diameter, not a radius. So if I actually go in and I take my depth of thread, so we're going to go ahead and use that 0.0571. So I am going to plug that in, 0.0571. Actually, we'll just 0.057. If I go ahead and plug that in and click out of it, we're going to notice that we can actually adjust that size. So again, I'm going to do one normal, and then I'm going to duplicate this, and we're going to do one with that times two so that we can see what's going on based on our diameter of cutting. So if I actually turn my model off here, guys, you're going to see there's my threading profile. Now, again, is if I had to do that times two, we can go in and we can actually times that by two. Again, we're offsetting that even further into our part, allowing us to mill that out. So again, is here's my model. Here's my first threading cycle. Now, if I drag this one above there, now if we look at this cycle, you're going to notice that it's dramatically deeper into our part. Again, I've seen this before where that diameter offset needs to be adjusted according to your guys' parts and profiles and what you're doing at the end of the day. Another kind of neat trick here for all of you is depending on how you're doing this, is if we go through our passes tab, again, my thread pitch is off, so I don't need thread diameter. We need to change my thread pitch, which my thread pitch is going to be one divided by 14. There we go. And then again, our pitch diameter offset is based on the depth of our thread times two. We may want to adjust that more, but now from this, we do have the ability to add our wear control in as well so that we can adjust it at the actual machine. This is, again, very, very beneficial inside of Fusion 360. I will tell you in all my times, no matter how hard I try to be perfect first time through on this, you're going to have to adjust that wear based off your machine, 
how much deflection you're getting and things of that nature. So with that, before I jump off and let you guys get back to your Friday, I wanna go ahead and say, if you like this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe to this channel so you get the latest updates on anything and everything. And if you're a gun nut like myself and you've seen my last couple of videos, don't miss our Milling Monday where we're gonna do the Forbidden Pocket. So with that, go out, get the day gun, guys, and have a great weekend.